It is a duty to cultivate and to exercise every power that will render us more efficient workers for God. So let me ask, if you're going out tomorrow evening, and we'll be getting started in, we'll say, roughly 48 hours, there's not a whole lot of training you can be doing right now. But what can you be doing when you are there that would most closely approximate this, that would get you in the best soul-winning shape? It's okay. You can, you can call out. What do you think? Prayer. Prayer, okay. Staying in connection with God. Okay, what else? Jace? Yeah. That's all right. Don't forget to, uh, don't be so busy trying to put together, I don't know, sermon thoughts or things of that nature that you don't actually get out there and, right, get the blood flowing. You do need exercise. You've got to get that bodily portion of the education there. And, of course, spending time in the Word, right? You don't want to be so busy preparing a sermon that you forget to study the Word that the sermon's based on. Another thought right here, and then I'm going to share a few, a few Bible texts. It's not simply the words that we share or the mastery of, of Scripture we share, but notice this. This comes from Gospel Workers. This is page 117. It says that in the work of soul winning, there is something besides wisdom that is needed. Great blank and wisdom are needed. What do you think would be needed besides wisdom and a knowledge of the Scriptures? What's going to love? Okay. It, it's, it's, it's closely related to that. You're going to be working with people, some of whom you might relate to, and some of them they might grate on your nerves. What? Patience, very close to that. Tact. Yes, great tact and wisdom are needed. The Savior never suppressed the truth, but he uttered it always in love. That's right. In his intercourse with others, he exercised the greatest tact, and he was always kind and thoughtful. Don't want to miss that part right there. Again, we might be so wrapped up in trying to have just the right phrase or something to use that we forget about being just it's the common courtesies. So yeah, don't, we don't leave that out. He was never rude, never needlessly spoke a severe word, never gave unnecessary pain to a sensitive soul. And everybody's sensitive in some sense. Okay. Now, just some Bible texts right here. You're going on the plane? Oh, by the way, when, when does the soul winning effort start, you think? Right now? Okay, well, could be right now. How about in the airport? Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of things there. Take advantage of those delays. You have all kinds of good conversations with people. Got glow tracks. Bathrooms are great places for them. Never, <laughs> never miss an opportunity. But when you, when you look at that, it's everywhere as part of the mission field right there. And if you ask yourself, what should I be doing? What does the Bible say about just about anything that you tackle? How are you to approach it? Yeah, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. And your hand's going to find a lot to do. So do it with all your might. Okay. Now, I know that not everybody is... It can be exciting to go on a trip... But it may not be exciting. It may be terrifying to actually speak. That may not be quite everyone's comfort zone right there. And so in case you are not sure that you will know what to say or you might fumble your words, you might say it poorly, a couple of thoughts right here. In John 14, 26, when Jesus was talking about going away, he said he would send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would do what? The Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you what? All things. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And God, you know, he also talks about in the last days that when we're brought before kings and governors, that may not be quite what we're doing, but nevertheless, the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you were to say, right? So we need not, we need not be afraid on that account. But also, we're going to be sharing a message, the three angels message, right? This is about character development, becoming like Christ. And if we do that, we are going to reflect God's character, which is a character of what? He is love, right? But guess what? The Bible says there is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear. So if you are a little bit afraid, okay. But guess what? You can ask God to cast it out. We need not, 
we need not fall prey to it. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So we want to ask him to remove that here. Anybody that's going on the mission trip, are you looking forward to coming back? I'm hoping you're looking forward to coming back. Okay. So if you are, maybe there might be just a little bit of a little bit of anxiousness. You might be somewhat afraid of being away from home. It may not be as comfortable. But if that is true, remember in the same passage, Jesus says that I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And for everybody that's giving any aspect of the Great Commission, what does he say? Lo, I am with you, what? Always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So we don't need to, to let that get to us. Um, here's one, because you never know. I don't know much about where you're going because I've not been there. But I know that when they have meetings going on, there's always opportunities to invite people, and there's oftentimes opportunities to pick them up. And so it could be somewhat akin to the canvassing field. And in the canvassing field, I know that one of the things that people come across that's not always the most pleasant are dogs. Right? And I shared this the other night, but I'll mention it again. It's so true. If you don't like dogs or if dogs don't like you, that's probably the more important one. The Bible tells us in Exodus 11:7, but against any of the children of Israel, which I'm hoping would be each and every one of us, shall not a dog sharpen his tongue. And to sharpen the Bible means to make a decision, like he, he chooses to go after you. You can say, God put it in his mind, he will not choose me. It is amazing how often he will answer that prayer. All right. Now, I'm going to ask this because I am ignorant about this part of the world. Does it get cold in the Dominican Republic? No. Okay. Well, that's all right. I came prepared. I was, thought it might not be. But let's suppose some of the people you meet are cold. Have we ever met cold people? Good. Then this will apply. When it is cold, we tend to want to stay inside. We don't like to go out. It's not comfortable. If you're working with cold people, same thing, right? Okay. What do you say to yourself if you are not wanting to mix with cold people? Do it anyway. Well, okay. But sometimes we're not really all that willing. We might just say, I don't want to do this. Here's a thought for you right here. Now, again, we're, we're mixing a little bit of weather with people here. But let's just apply this to people. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. And I bring this up because the message that we share is the three angels' message, right? The three angels' message, we are told, is the message that will ripen this world for the harvest when Jesus comes. So if we start getting discouraged thinking, well, the people are just, well, I don't like to be around them. They're cold. It's, I get discouraged because there's one rejection after another. We don't want to think that way. Here's a, here's a thought for you. To John, we're open scenes of deep and thrilling interest in the experience of the church. He saw the position, dangers, conflicts, and final deliverance of the people of God. He records the closing messages which are to ripen the harvest of the earth, either as sheaves for the heavenly garner or as faggots for the fires of destruction. So if you ever find yourself thinking, I just don't want to go out, I wanted to go on the trip and now I wish I weren't here, just remember this, we are here to gather a harvest. And so don't let that bother you. All right. Now, there's another uh, interesting thought in the Bible right here. It says that as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. We're coming from a distant place, right? So if you are thinking you're a little cool to the idea of going out, it just it seems to have lost its luster, that's all right. Then just think of yourself as delivering cold water. If you are kind of off on the idea, then think of it this way. The water that you're going to bring should be cold. But that's what people want. Uh, the Bible says in John 4, 14, the water that I shall give him, or think of it as you, the one delivering the message, shall be in you a well of water springing up into everlasting life. 
He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, your own, shall flow rivers of living water. And this he spoke of the Spirit. And also, you don't want to forget this. The greatest work on this earth is winning souls. He that winneth souls is what? Wise, Proverbs 11.30. Daniel 12.3 says, They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Think of it, each person. There will be those who make decisions on this trip, and those that do will become stars, and you will be able to have the privilege one day of meeting them in heaven and being thankful to Jesus that I had a part in bringing this particular soul here. That should be exciting right there. And then finally, consider this. Look ahead. Look ahead to what it will be one day. All of these beautiful souls that can be won and that will be won by faith, Jesus says that they shall be mine. In that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Did you know that? You're actually, it's like you're a, a prospector. You're going out to dig up jewels in the earth. You can present them to the master. So that is an exciting, exciting prospect right there. And I just wanted to leave you with those very, very, very few thoughts right there. And I believe at this point we can go ahead and we can invite those that will be coming on the mission trip. We can invite them up here. We're going to have a special prayer of consecration for you. So if you want to just come right up here on the um, po podium platform right here. Well, we've got 12 of you right here. I would like to have perhaps two of you pray. I'll take one gentleman and one lady. Do we have one of each here? Who would like to pray? Do you have any ladies that would be bold enough to pray? I'm not a lady. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, we got the gentleman taken care of then. All right, Omar will pray. Do I have any of the young ladies who would like to pray? Okay, Judy will pray. Okay, very well. And then... After the two of you prayed, perhaps Pastor Sam and I could pray and just ask God to especially bless this trip that you'll be on. And let's see here. Let's go ahead. Let's start with you, Judith. My dear Father in heaven, Lord, I am honored to go and work with you. And I know my friends are as well. I just ask, Father, that our hearts may be renewed every single day, that our hearts may be broken for those that are in need, that our hearts may yearn, that our hearts may go in deep prayer for every soul that we meet. I ask, Father, that as we go forward, we know that the enemy will want to work. And right now, in your name, Father, I ask that you may cast away all fear, all uh, um, opposing forces that might want to work. And I pray, Father, that our eyes may be open to see the great news of salvation being spread, hearts being transformed, and that we may see the hope of glory, Christ in us and in the people that we go see, be a reality. Father, I especially want to ask um, that you right now prepare the people, the churches, the speakers, um, the children's ministry, and the health. We ask that you may guide their mouths, guide their, mo their mouth, their minds, their thoughts. And I pray, Father, that everything that we, that we may do may be for your honor and your glory. Let not man, human flesh, step in the way, Father. We thank you so much for choosing us, for loving us, and for the great wonders that you have ahead for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to get a chance to go abroad and to share the light that we've been receiving, dear God. I pray and ask that you prepare the way for us, dear Lord. There are people there who are inquiring what the truth is, and though we may not have all the light there is to have, we do have some light that we can share with the people that we're going to be mingling and interacting with, dear God. And I pray and ask that you help us to be ministered unto while we minister unto others, Heavenly Father, and help us to enjoy our time there, dear Lord. We know that ministering to people and witnessing isn't a burdensome task, dear Lord, but it's a delight because you make it that way. And I pray and ask that you help us to represent you and to be royal ambassadors for the for the king of the universe. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Father in heaven, I thank you for each one of these precious students here. And I ask that you will now give them a good night's rest, that in the morning that they will be prepared to finish any exams or any other material so that that will be off their mind. Then I pray that at five that you will lead them safely on to Texas, that there would be no mechanical difficulties, no accidents of any kind, that they will get a good night's rest there and in the morning, this following morning, that they would then be able to use their time well at the airport, on the airplane, pray for safe travel on over to the Dominican Republic, that they will get there safely, and that during their whole time there, that no matter what may come up, I know there can, be, there can be power outages, there can be all manner of difficulties, but that their eyes would be firmly fixed on thee, that they would not for any reason forsake that time with you each morning, each evening, spending time in prayer and, and personal study with you. I pray that any messages that are to be presented would come straight from your throne, any adjustments that might need to be made to any prepared scripts, that you would make it clear. And I pray that your words would be spoken, not any of their own. I pray that you would give them that tact that is needed for that one-on-one -on -one work as they, as they plead with souls to make a decision. I ask that for any down there that may need to, to, to translate, you would give them wisdom so that they would translate it just according as you would have it said. I pray in advance for those souls that are down there that you know are ready to be one. I pray that they would come. They would not allow themselves to be dissuaded by family or work pressures or any distractions of any kind. Keep them well so that they can attend night after night. I pray that you would, that you would bring them and that you would bring them to the point of decision, that they would make that eternal choice to follow you and stay surrendered. I pray in advance for those that are down there in the church already that they would have a willingness to come each night to encourage those who are attending and that once the students return home that they would uh, do their part in helping these dear souls settle into the truth. And I pray in advance too that you will bring all of our students and Pastor Sam back safely and that on their return trip that they would be able to uh, be, play a part in winning more souls by uh, giving wise words to those that are on the plane with them or passing out literature as appropriate. Get them home safely when they're on the road. We thank you, Father, for answering this, and we look forward to hearing the results of this mission. In Jesus' name, amen. Loving Savior, you are so worthy of this mission. So worthy to be made known, you're so able to save to the uttermost. And what a privilege you've given us to be able to go. Lord, we thank you for hearing these practical prayers, the things that have been mentioned step by step, the very real practical needs that we will have, and that through your mediation and righteousness, we will have those things. We will be blessed. We will receive from your grace. Lord, we're kneeling here in consecration so that in a very special way, in a, in, in a way that is unique and needed, that we might be consecrated to the work that you've called us to do, each one of us, setting aside personal gain, personal interest, simply seeking 
for your spirit to fill us. And we are asking for the baptism of your spirit, that we might be filled with your might, with your love, and that what we do indeed will speak of you and be uh, drawn others to yourself. You said if you be lifted up, you will draw others to yourself. That's what we want to do, Lord. Bless us to this end, and Lord, bless our, our campus and our students, those that remain behind and with the missions that they have and the, the things that you have for them. And may uh, we, we pray the prayer of Mispa, that you will watch between us and our families while we are apart one from another. Is our prayer in your worthy and wonderful name, Lord Jesus. Amen.